and Ben Earl will no surprise Dowie Morris, the Guinness Six Nations player of the match, and you might suggest by some distance. Oh! <laughs> there, wasn't, there wasn't a voting uh, situation there, it was a one-man vote. We've got some supporters behind it, they're going absolutely mad. I think we might get sprayed with some Guinness in a minute, but that's where it stands. It's given Scotland a chance probably to spoil the party. It doesn't matter. I don't know the permutations, whatever. I just want to see that guy there, Danny Kerr, celebrating Marcus Smith, putting smiles on people's faces. So many times people say that, and they don't really mean it. Well, they have today. It wasn't a classic game, but it was exciting. If you're an England supporter, that's at the level that Ireland are, are accepted at. They're the team to beat, and England have beat them today. Well, that, that drop goal may not have been good news for Ireland, but it's brilliant for the Guinness Six Nations Championship. It means that uh, on Super Saturday, there's so much to play for. England, they go to play uh, France in Lyon. Ireland, they play the Scots in Dublin. Uh, Scotland beaten today by Italy by, by two points in Rome. The Italians moving up the table. They play Wales in Cardiff. Uh, the, the wooden spoon, where's that going to go? Where's the championship going to go? There'll be no Grand Slam. But it's going to be a tantalising final weekend, that's for sure. Oh, mate. It just get, keeps on giving, doesn't it? It is the greatest rugby competition in the world. Andy Farrell knows they've been beaten today and probably by the side to took their chances. Ireland had their chances to do it. I thought England had imploded on a couple of times, giving away stupid penalties. But there was a desire there. Again, led superbly from that man, but it takes a collective, it takes all 23, it takes the coaching staff. And I've got to say, they were playing for Borthwick today. They're playing for the crowd, they're playing for whatever, it doesn't matter. They've, they've, they've just grounded out and they've won it. And that's all that matters. And yet, yeah, they kicked England, but they, they said they would try to play the season. They try to move their game on, develop their game. Definite signs of that, you feel? There has to, they're not going to go away from this kicking game. You know, it's that classic thousand metres and whatever, we've talked about it. You, you, you have that within your game, you've got to have a balance. That's, that's the main thing. And they had a balance today. Could have lost it, but they didn't. They won it. Well done, Kerr. Yeah, Danny Kerr celebrating with his wife and, uh, and all the kids. Blake, Koha, Rocco and Judy. Now let's get down to the touchline and get some reaction. Ben, congratulations, you are the Guinness Six Nations player of the match. What an incredible way to win a test match here at Twickenham. Yeah, um, unbelievable really. I'm a bit emotional because uh, obviously Jamie lost his mum the other week and uh, spoke a lot about that this week and then Danny's the 100th and, and you know some of the crap that's been thrown at this team over the last week. You know, apparently we're the worst England team ever, so um, we've done pretty well for that accolade. I mean, you channel those emotions in different ways, but let's take it to that last minute. At what point did you sense that the win was on and that Marcus had dropped into the pocket to kick that goal? Oh, we, we, we knew from the beginning of the game if we played our, our best stuff, um, we'd have a chance. And, you know, everything came together today. We're very fortunate. Amazing stadium, amazing fans, um, amazing teammates. Yeah, just so pleased. And England have threatened over the course of this tournament that they were building something. We saw signs of the attack in the first half, defensive resolve. Was that more of the performance that you've known that this group was capable of? We've been training like that every day. And, you know, we all know that sometimes it doesn't translate onto the pitch, but um, people don't see half the stuff we do. They don't see half the stuff and they can write what they want. But, um, God, just so pleased that, you know, that's, a, that's, that's where we can take the team. And, and, you know, there were parts of that game that we can really improve on. So really pleased. And for you personally, you've spoken about wanting to be discussed as one of the best back rowers out there. You showed it again today. How pleased are you with the growth in your performance week after week? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm working hard. We're all working hard. Um, yeah, I know, playing the best teams in the world, it always brings the best out of you. So credit to Ireland, credit to our boys, credit to the fans. Uh, yeah, what a great day. Congratulations, Ben. Good luck next week. Cheers. Yeah, 19 carries, 140 metres and a try for Ben Earl. Yeah, Dabby, there, there were some whispers, maybe the word arrogance, I don't know, but certainly overconfidence from, not, not inside the Irish team, but uh, from pundits and ex-players. But England, England have shown them today. Well, that's the beauty of sport, isn't it? You know, <laughs> total underdogs, they were, the bookies were 10, you know, 12, 15 points. Thanks, Dabby. Peter. 
a deflating way to lose a test match at the end. What are your initial thoughts about how the game played out? Uh, look, I think credit England. I thought they played really well. Um, you know, we spoke beforehand about how dangerous they can be, how much they disrupt their attack and uh, defend really well. So, you know, I think credit goes to England. It looked that they came in with a clear game plan. Were you perhaps frustrated that you weren't able to figure it out and get into your normal rhythm? Yeah, look, we, we were frustrated with some of our, certainly some of our discipline was poor, including my yellow card, but um, I think it was more down to them, putting us under pressure. Um, you know, their, their, their ability to disrupt our rock was very good, and, you know, we struggled to put, uh, you know, quick phases, quick ball together. You still head into next week's fixture against Scotland with a chance to win the championship, so what lessons will you take out most from this game? Yeah, look, we'll, 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 we'll go home and we'll review. Um, we'll get back into camp and we'll kick on and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try and win a, a Six Nations Championship. Thanks, Peter. See you next week. Well, England against Ireland is a rivalry. It's many storied. Ireland have had their glorious successes in London, but also some of their most painful defeats. For example, a stab in Dublin in the 2019 Six Nations, which drilled a deep hole in Irish confidence before the Japan World Cup, a warm-up defeat at Twickenham. But the big white iceberg created a huge crack in the Irish hole today. Let's hear from England captain, Jimmy George. Jamie, I imagine a lot of emotions going through your mind, through your heart at the minute. How do you feel after that incredible test match? Yeah, mate, it's, uh, it's been a really tough week. It's been a tough couple of weeks and um, lost for words a little bit, mate. I'm uh, so proud of this team. Came under a lot of uh, negativity after the Scotland game, probably rightly so, but the way, we, the way we did that, like we talked about making Twickenham great again. How good is this? How good is this? I love it, mate. This is, a, this is a, the best possible end to a, to a tough few weeks for me. And is it perhaps validation? You talked about the journey that England been on and maybe things that have been said about them, showing today what can happen when you put it together properly. Like we've known that something special is coming with this group, if I'm completely honest. Like internally, we had a huge amount of confidence and belief. Like, like we're, we're taking on the best team in the world. Are we the best team in the world yet? No. But are we going in the right direction? Do we have the right people in place? Absolutely. And it's been a couple of years since England have won three in the championship, win a fourth, and you perhaps could finish with the title, depending how results go. How pleasing would that be, given the journey that you've been on over the last few weeks? Mate, that's, um, that's the goal. That's why we're here. We've got to regroup. We've got to have a few beers tonight. Uh, I need to have a few beers tonight. But then, look, we've got a tough challenge going away to France. They're a great team. Um, but, look, if we can't take belief off that performance, we never will be able to, and that was special. Congrats, Jamie. Go and enjoy. Thank you. Jimmy George, who lost his mother, who passed away very sadly just before the Scotland game. But isn't it fabulous to see, from an English perspective, Twickenham vibrant again after that victory against the double back-to-back -back Grand Slam chasing Ireland's side? Look what it means to Marlo Atoje and the rest of the England players. Fewan Boso could have a very long career ahead of him in English shirt. And Joe Marner is always up for the crack, as they say. <laughs> Marcus Smith making the difference coming off the bench for England to secure the three points that beat Ireland. Beat Ireland. And here's the table, almost complete after round four. Ireland still on top, the 16 points. England four points behind them, Scotland five points behind Ireland at the top. Ireland, they play Scotland and Dublin. England, they go to France uh, in Lyon, and uh, Wales play Italy in Cardiff. And remember, Wales play France tomorrow in Cardiff, and that uh, result there will shape the table further. But no Grand Slam for Ireland, still very much on for them, though, to win the Guinness Six Nations Championship should they dispose of Scotland next week in Dublin.